optic lens can be treated as made up of two refracting surfaces okay so the lens equations that we are going to see in future all are applicable only when we are talking about thin lens system if your lens is really thick then again we need to consider it as com combination of two refracting surfaces let us take example of a point object which is kept in front of a spherically refracting surface here's for a spherically refracting surface a very common example can be a glass rod which is having a curvature towards the end so let's say i have a glass rod of this kind here i am drawing a very magnified image point p image is being formed inside a glass rod which is medium b and na is less than nb so the ray of light which is entering inside the glass will bend towards the normal and hence image will be formed so we will look at the intersection of these two rays and our image is formed over here so it might be right now this is about the point object what will happen if we take a real life object for a real life object the situation will be little bit different let us take so now we have to look at the image formation for object which is a non point object so here c is our center of curvature so here it will go undeviated and the other line that we want to take is where it is hitting the vertex so when it reaches here because we are considering that nb is greater than na so our ray will bend towards the normal and we will have this image being formed over here so this is our p prime size is y obviously you can see that the image is so inverted diminished and real what about s and s prime positive or negative s being the distance this and s prime being distance this what about nature of s and s prime s is real or not what is the rule when the object is on the same side of the incoming wave front it's positive and when the image is on the same side of the outgoing wave front it's positive see object is on the same side of the incoming wave front so s is positive and s prime is on the same side of the outgoing wave front so s prime is also positive now how do we define our uh, object and image relationship for this we had 1 by s plus 1 by s prime equal to 1 by r for reflecting surfaces now this is refracting surface so for this our relationship will be given here na by s s is object which is kept on the side of the medium a which is having refractive index na thus nb by s prime equal to nb minus na upon r now in this situation nb is greater than na so the right hand side value is positive it can also happen that if your nb is less than na then it will become negative so it depends upon the relationship between nb and na now what happens to the relationship between lateral magnification m equal to size of the object and size of the image relationship remains the same there is no change the change will happen at s and s prime so it's na s prime 
by n v s negative. Like if you are given, let's say this is a full side, and you have, you are trying to see the object which is at the base. Here, let's see the base. Then the rays which will come out. are going from higher refractive index to lower refractive index so they will bend towards the normal or away from the normal away right so it will go like this so in this situation if the one which is going straight will go undeviated and if you back trace the image it will appears to be raised right so you have S as the object depth and S prime as the apparent depth. Can I use the same equation here? In this case, what is R? In this case, what is R? Radius of curvature. It's a plane surface. So what will be R? For this case, our R is infinity. Hence. This equation will modify to n a by s plus n b by s prime equal to one by infinity, which is zero. So the ultimate relationship will become n a by s equal to minus n b by s prime. So n a s prime equal to minus n b s. so you know the refractive index of the two so if you want to calculate apparent depth just substitute s n a n b you can calculate s prime minus n b by n a into s okay so you can solve apparent depth problem also with same equation so if i give you uh, you know for example even if i give you a water drop you know that water droplet can behave as a what kind of lens is water drop it's a converging lens of a very short focal length so if you are having radiation falling on to it it will act as a very fat convex mirror okay very short focal length. this is what i have drawn is very exaggeration but if you want to calculate the image formation by it you cannot use lens equation what you need to do is you have to think it like made up of two refracting surfaces then look for r for this take it as let's say my object is over here a point object then take into account s you will have n a you will have n b so here my n a is air air n b is glass then you calculate where the image will be formed inside the glass then that image formed inside the glass will be object for rest of the surface so let's say image is formed somewhere over here s prime then this will be image sorry object for rest of the surface then i will have na prime which is glass and nb which is air and then you will look for image formation so this is your s1 prime you can see so the image formed by one surface will work as a object for another surface that is how you calculate image formation by a drop so this will act as a converging surface or converging lens now imagine the other way round situation if we think about a air bubble inside water then what kind of surface that would be so this if you have rays hitting air bubble 
then it will act as a very strong diverging surface and virtual image will be formed so this is water drop in air and air bubble inside water so air bubble inside water is acting as a diverging 